Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Simon Eddles. I'm delighted to host the latest Travel Bulletin webinar and the last Travel Bulletin webinar of 2023, uh, this time focused on the luxury market. Uh, we're joined today by four great partners who are keen to update you on all of their products and destination news. So hopefully helping you develop a stronger working relationship with all of them as well. So let's meet them. Um, first, if I can say hello to um, to Manav Hartano, the account executive for Alula. Manav, are you there? I'm here. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Fantastic, Manav. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Our second presenter this afternoon is Oliver on behalf of Bahia Principe. Oliver, are you there? Hello, everybody. Nice to be with you. Hello. Good afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Our third presenter for this afternoon is a, um, a welcome and regular sight for you, I'm sure. It's Peter Green from the Malta Tourism Authority. Peter, are you there? I am indeed, and I hope you're well, Simon. And thank you for having us along on the uh, the last one of the year. I can't believe that. It is, I know. And we're still in, only in November, so plenty of time. If everyone demands one, we'll put another one on, I'm sure. Um, our, our final presenter um, for today is... Uh, Lady Montoni for the, uh, the UK and Ireland country manager for Delfina Hotels and Resorts. Hello, hi, Lena. Everyone. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us. Um, I'm just going to run through the format for today, um, just to make sure everyone is aware of it. Um, usual format. Each of our partners will deliver a live 10-minute presentation. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, and we know you will have, because we want you to post them using our Q&A function. Um, as you do that, please, please think about what's helpful, not only to you, but really for your customers. So think about things you can put in the Q&A function that then I can ask our suppliers, um, partners at the end of the presentation um, in our Q&A uh, question and answer session. So Think about things you can ask in that, um, and then we'll get through as many as we can in the time allows. Um, each presenter will also announce their competition prize if they're giving one away, and a question at the end of their training session as well. You'll need to enter in the normal way via our website. Um, it's travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. Um, and the deadline to enter for all of today's prizes is going to be this Sunday coming, the 3rd of December. Oh my goodness, I feel cold thinking about it. Right, so this Sunday coming um, at, I think, 4 p.m. So you've got plenty of time to listen carefully, re-watch the video at leisure, um, and then answer the questions via our website. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with our first presenter. So I'd ask everyone except Manav to, uh, to sort of mute their sound and turn off their videos. Um, not all of you at home, obviously. If you're um, if you're watching us, then that's great. Um, so, Manav, if you'd like to share your screen, yes, I will. Fantastic. I will leave you to it. Please start your presentation. Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mana. I will be talking to you all about Alula today on behalf of the World Commission of Alula. So Alula is located in the northwest of Saudi Arabia, and it is located 1,000 kilometers northwest of Riyadh. It has a population of 45,000 people, and as you can see here is the map of Saudi Arabia, and you can see Alula is right over here. So there are plenty of ways to get to Alula, but there are a couple of airline options. So you can fly nationally via Saudi Air, and you can fly domestically from Riyadh or Jeddah. You can also fly from low cost airlines, so this could be through Flynas or Fly Dubai. And recently they've announced that you can fly from Qatar Airways, so this is via Doha, straight to Alula. And you can also fly from Royal Jordanian, which has recently been announced, and this will come more in a few weeks' time. And also just a fun fact that Alula has 22 flights um, that come from abroad, that come to Alula. So it's an international, upcoming international 
destination in that sense. So this leads me on to tell you guys now that there's also going to be a new terminal that will be opening in a few years time. But at the moment, Alula currently has two terminals. So they have an executive terminal and an international terminal. The international terminal is obviously for tourists that do come to Alula and the international, the executive terminal is more for private aircrafts, more for like private luxurious people, I would say in that sense, um, more for like pilots in that sense. But the new international terminal that will be opening will seek to feature a new five-star hotel and again, more of the sustainable edge, but more is coming soon. So Alula has five key pillars and they're ranging from natural sustainability, local authenticity, luxury quality, journey adventure and culture and wonder. And together they seek to create Alula as a living immersive experience known as the world's largest outdoor museum. Alula has four key heritage sites. And these are known as Hegra, which is the first UNESCO heritage site. And it's known for its tombs. And I would say it's probably the most popular heritage site out of the four. You also have Dadan, which is known for their Dadan kingdom and Leons. And fun fact is that we believe that we can only see 6% of Dadan because the rest of the city is buried underneath of the rocks. You also have Jabal Ikma, which is also known as the modern day Twitter or an open library. And this is where pilgrims or people like to come together and just tell stories. But again, you can also find the Arabic language dating back to many years and to now as well engraved in the walls. And lastly, you have the old town, which was dating back to the 12th century where the locals still like to maintain its reputation of it being an old town, but you can also find souvenirs, restaurants and coffee shops too. And it is made out of mudstones and bricks. So Al Jadida stands for New Town in the Arabic language, and it is Alula's arts and cultural district. And you can also find the world's largest hand painted carpet around. So Al Jadida actually leads you to the Oasis. The Oasis is located in the old town, and it was actually awarded the best tourism village by the World or United States United Nations World Tourism Organization. And you can also find here the Heritage Oasis Trail. So it's a six kilometer walk. I actually went to Alula last month and I walked through it. It was absolutely beautiful. It's free and open to visitors day and night. You also have Daimuma, which is like an open oasis, also known as a farmland. It's actually the top right image right here. This is the Heritage Oasis Trail. And in Daimuma, you'll also have just a blend of art, nature and heritage combined. And you also have guided tours that take part in the Oasis too, led by a lo local Rari. Alula has an absolutely fantastic geology. Uh, why it sets itself apart from other destinations is just imagine visiting there and picturing an elephant rock, which is right here. So it's actually a very Instagrammable spot where people like to go by the sunset. You also see coffee shops nearby. There's stargazing experience, which takes place an hour away from Alula, and it's absolutely incredible because you'll have an astronomer expert that'll tell you about how the locals or the Arabs used to navigate using stars as codes. And you also have the top of Harat, again, just beautifully at the top where you can see the, the canyons, and it's absolutely incredible. Alula is also known for its high thrilling adrenaline activities, one being the Alula stairway, which takes you up a hundred stairs to zip line. And you can also be launched into the air surrounded by the canyons in the background. Again, I did this last month and it was totally worth it. It's not as scary as it seems, but I would say if you had the chance, why not face your fears, I guess. And Mariah is actually the world's largest mirror building. The fact that it's not only known for conferences to be held here, but also concerts. So John Legend, Alicia Keys, Mariah Carey, and Lionel Richie have all performed here. And next February, actually, James Blunt will also be performing at this venue. It's also known for being an arts exhibition, having weddings and film and commercial shoot location too. Alula is a luxurious boutique destination and it's also known for its boutique hotel offerings. So Banintry Alula and Habitas Alula are both five-star hotels and both located in the Ashar Valley. 
I stayed at Habitat last month and we had our own electric bike and just our outdoor patio. And in Banyan Tree, half of the hotels have your own swimming pool. And both, again, located near the Mariah, so absolutely breathtaking. You also have Shaden, a four-star hotel known for being more traditional. Sahari, a three-star entry-level hotel. And Cloud7, a four-star bungalow type of hotel. So soon we're actually going to be having two hotels open. They're going to be Dart and Tora, which is going to have a sustainable edge, and it will be the first hotel located in the Old Town, and it's going to open in a few weeks from now. And you also have the Hegra Boutique Hotel, which will open in January 2024, and it is going to be the first hotel located in Hegra. So in the Oasis, you can also find a bunch of different restaurants, all with a very luxurious and amazing culinary offering. So we have Entricot, which is this nice French restaurant located in the Old Town, which you can see right here. We also have Pink Camel and part of the Oasis, both also located in the Oasis area. My personal favorite was somewhere when I went, and that was located in the Old Town as well, because I was actually vegetarian and I just ate a lot of the food there because it was just too good. And uh, Toilet Faiza is actually, fun fact, run by a woman now. And the founder was inspired by her, or is inspired by her grandma's recipe, who also is based in the area. So if you want to become a specialist or an expert in Alula, you can go into www.alulaspecialist.com. And over here, you'll find a bunch of webinars, videos, and content if you want to learn more about Alula. And you can also stay tuned for great prizes. So who knows, you might actually also have the chance to visit Alula because we have done some of those types of competitions before. And just feel free to learn more about the destination too because it's only growing more and it's absolutely amazing and incredible. Talking about it is one thing, but having been there myself last month, I was totally blown away by it. And you can also check out our website, experiencealula.com. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and join us on a journey through time in Alula soon. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, man. That's that's fantastic. I've um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, in terms of, if I can ask, I, I've got uh, Jack who asks here, um, in terms of getting there, what's the easiest way and are there more routes likely to open up? You hint at a sort of Royal Jordania, I think, or, or whatever. So what's the likely uh, sort of growth over the course of the next year? So I'd say the latest two are definitely going to be Qatar Airways and Royal Jordanian Air. So Qatar Airways, you can fly directly from Doha to Alula, and that should be around two hours. And then Royal Jordanian, you can fly from Amman to Alula. So those are the latest two openings, but I'm pretty sure by next year we'll have a lot more or more to come. Okay. Um, I, another, so, someone else who uh, wishes to remain anonymous um, says, Alula looks incredible, um, and not a destination that they know, but um, wondering, are there any cultural issues we should be aware of um, in terms of telling clients before they go or when they're preparing? I think a big concern when I went on this trip last month was women's safety, but I can also reassure that when I went, I went with um, a bunch of women actually, and we all felt totally safe. The people were very friendly, willing to get to know us. And I think that was also a concern I had originally was about the safety, but I just felt reassured just how just being there because it was such a, it's such a small oasis city, but it's also a very quiet destination. So I feel like I felt really big inside. So I kind of just tried to not really think about the whole cultural issues because it didn't really impact me. But the people who I went with, we were, again, all of us had 99% positive experiences. Okay. Um, one thing as well, just to come out of that, in terms of length of stay, what would you recommend and, and how do you sort of judge that? And do you try and fit it in with um, any other sort of two-centre option? So for length of stay, I would recommend 
five days and four nights. And realistically, I would recommend personally arriving on the Sunday and actually leaving on the Thursday. And that is because that is like the cheapest options, I would say, because I also did that. And we were able to actually do pretty much almost everything because I'd say peak season is between October till March. But I'd say that's also kind of like the best time to go as well, because the weather is it's not too hot, but it's also not too cold. Alula has a lot of sun for like, I'd say the least amount of sun you'll have in January is probably only like 75 percent. And the most will probably be about like 95 percent around July or August time. But again, I would say, yeah, five nights, four days. If you want something that's not going to be too hectic, where you also have time to, I guess, make the most of your hotel accommodation and just take it easy. Yeah, well, the, the hotels look pretty impressive from what we can see, from what you've shown us. Um, so does the food and obviously so does uh, so does everything there. So, well, thank you very much, man. We really appreciate you coming on and, and telling us all about it. Um, it's it, in terms of sort of rounding off today. Um, could you please share with us your competition prize and your competition question? Right. So my competition prize is or Alula's competition prize is actually going to be a 50 pound voucher from Amazon and you'll also get a personalized Alula goodie bag and I won't say specifically what's going to be inside but I'll kind of range it into saying you'll get like a diary pen, water bottle just basic items but all from Alula a cap so yeah that's the I guess gift prizes I'll say and our question I would say is the names of the two upcoming hotels in Alula that are going to be open. Okay, so as a, a sort of uh, a, a round back on that, um, the prize, we've got a goodie bag from Alula and also a £50 voucher, which is very kind. So um, uh, you have to go to the website, travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition and answer the question, what are the two hotels? So what are the names of the two hotels? That'll be there. Do that. Um, we'll see you at the end if you can, Manav, as well. Thank you very much again. Um, and if you would like to uh, to sort of mute yourself and turn off your video for the time being, we'll see you at the end of the uh, webinar. OK, um, it takes me to our second um, presenter. So if we can have, please, Oliver from Bahia Principe. Oliver, are you there? Yes. Hello again, everybody. Yeah, I'm here and I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, it's a pleasure. And uh, well, I want to present you the Caribbean destinations. There you go. Well, I will leave you to it, Oliver. If you would like to share your screen and I'll wait and just until I'm sure you're all good and then I'll leave you to it. So let's see if it works. Here we go. Can you see my presentation? We can see you. Okay. I will leave you in peace. Thank you very much, Simon. OK, so let's go. Um, yeah, I'm happy to present you today uh, Bahia Principe Hotels and Resorts. We do have 24 hotels uh, all over the Caribbean and uh, mostly based in the Dominican Republic, in Mexico, Riviera Maya, and Jamaica. Yeah, so uh, today we are talking about luxury. So I will present you all of our Bahia Principal luxury hotels. And let's start with the vacation. So, uh, we are right now arriving uh, the Dominican Republic, Punta Cana area, which you can see here in our image. And then let's find out what we need for a fantastic special vacation in the lux luxury segment. So, for all hotels of Bahia Principal, we are talking about uh, really nice and beautiful five-star properties. There is uh, the Bahia Principal Grand Hotels, the Bahia Principal Luxury Hotels, which is a top luxury segment. And then we do have another brand, which is uh, Bahia Principal Fantasia, especially for families. 
What do you need for a nice vacation? Of course, a beautiful Caribbean weather, the Caribbean sound, the uh, uh, bachata and merengue sound uh, from the Dominican locals, and a beautiful view from your sunbeds here. And you can enjoy, of course, coming with the whole entire family. There's a lot of amusements uh, for children and uh, also for the uh, elder ones, for, for adults. So uh, you can join vacation together and uh, these fantastic shows we have at night in our properties uh, all over the Caribbean. Huh? It doesn't matter if you go to Dominican Republic, to Mexico, Jamaica, we do have really nice entertainment. Yeah, and beautiful locations. As you can see here, an example, one of our new bars in a hotel uh, from the Dominican Republic. I will tell you a little bit more later. But then you get a first image, uh, a first view about uh, what uh, you can expect when arriving to Bahia Principe Hotels. Yeah, we do have really nice rooms, spacious rooms uh, with a beautiful view. And uh, well, come out of your room in the morning and you have a, a bath at the swimming pool. Here is uh, directly uh, the pool area for our premium junior suites. And if you want to have the big swimming pool then you have the sea right in front of you here you can see uh, the dominican republic same as in mexico we have this uh, nice building which is la ola uh, restaurants and it's uh, really eight beautiful international restaurants uh, they are open for every client so from uh, all hotels clients may join uh, our restaurants there there are uh, they are all inclusive in our all inclusive package and uh, some of them uh, just uh, ask at the reception then uh, they are on charge with a reserve former reservation uh, but you can join them two or three nights uh, per week so um, you have a really wide choice of different restaurants yeah Beautiful, uh, perfect cuisine, of course, uh, very important for vacations. And this is uh, an example of one of our new restaurants, a Mongol restaurant uh, in the Dominican Republic. Uh, brand new, we are going to open tomorrow at uh, Bahia Principal Luxury Esmeralda in Punta Cana. We do have uh, two beautiful golf courses. If you want to go for golf in the south of the Dominican Republic, or in Mexico, uh, both uh, golf courses are from Bahia Principe, so our own ones. You can do the reservations and you don't need a special handicap, uh, but you can enjoy, enjoy golf. Yeah, after sports, uh, you fell again in love with the property and, of course, you are there in a romantic uh, vacation and maybe you're thinking of honeymoon. So this is one of the best places to go for honeymoons. We can give you more information for special packages. Now we're coming to the south of the Dominican Republic. You see these beautiful white sandy beaches with these coconut palms and trees uh, surrounded. And in the center, we do have our very, very nice uh, Bahia Principal Luxury Burganville. This is an adults only, so uh, you can choose uh, if you want to go with family or if you want to have a more calm uh, holiday and if, if you want to have a lot of fun and animation, then you go to the Bahia Principe Fantasia. The Bahia Principe Luxury Esmeralda, based in Punta Cana, best to arrive the Dominican Republic from Santo Domingo or directly to Punta Cana Airport. Yeah, this hotel is going to open again tomorrow. We just renovated 470 rooms. This is a huge complex, but it is totally renovated with the newest and best restaurants, pool area, animation, sports and wellness, a children park uh, Yeah, for to enjoy the pool area for the children or here 
the adults, which is uh, Bahia Principal Luxury Amba, right beside the Esmeralda. Punta Cana. I said before, we do have the Bahia Principe Fantasia Punta Cana. This is our hotel, especially for families in the Dominican Republic. And if you go to the north, you can join Samana. And from there, you have a beautiful uh, view right over to a nice uh, island, which is uh, well known as the Bacardi Island. Uh, here we do have the Bahia Principal Luxury Samana. It's an adults only and with option for half board and bed and breakfast. Something different from the all inclusive. Yeah, and here we are. Only eight minutes away by boat. You come to join our Cayo Levantado Resort. Uh, this hotel opened brand new in June uh, 23. And uh, it's a five-star luxury, high-class, top segment of Dominican Republic. Then let's turn over to the Riviera Maya, uh, Mexico, uh, Cancun. You arrive to Cancun Airport, then you go down south and you reach the Riviera Maya area. And you have the Chichen Itza and the Uxmal and Coba. Uh, monuments of the Antigua Maya culture. You have the pyramids and right beside, uh, just uh, 20 minutes away by bus, uh, you uh, arrive our Bahia Principal Luxury, Akumal. Beautiful property right beside. We do have the Bahia Principal Luxury, Sian Khan, with its old own golf course, uh, as I said, with special uh, wedding packages, all inclusive, a lot of international uh, restaurants, beautiful areas, green areas, and uh, you have the cenote, the, the natural uh, water fountains in the in Mexico, and uh, right in front the sea. Let's turn over to the Jamaican uh, properties. We have uh, in uh, beside Montego Bay, not too far. It's just uh, 25 minutes by car, and then you arrive the Runaway Bay. And here you have the typical Jamaican feeling, and you have the resorts uh, right in front of this uh, beautiful sea. So, uh, perfect place to enjoy your holidays. Uh, if you want to have uh, to go with families, then we have the Bahia Principe Grand Jamaica, and especially for adults only, our Bahia Principe Luxury One Array Bay. Last but not least, for all of you, uh, the price of today is uh, something we want to divide between all of you, and it's our special reward, especially for new members. If you're going to visit our website on bahiaprincipe.com, you can register as a new member, and then you get 5,000 reward points extra for you, extra for this event, uh, and valid for one week. Till next week, Friday, you can inscribe and uh, be part of our Bahia Principe family as a new member. And if you are already a member, then just please send me your email and contact me and you will receive these extra 5,000 points too, and you can change these points for, uh, for your next stay at one of our hotels for excursions or if you want to join the spa the golf courts if you want to reserve any kind of transfers or special dinners and parties these points are it's a reception just uh, let them know and you receive a nice price yeah, that's uh, true luxury and it's meeting happiness. Uh, so I'm happy to be here for your questions and please uh, feel free to contact me whenever you want. And I'm happy to join the meetings with you. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you very much, Oliver. You've, um, we've, we feel that uh, we know more and more about what you do. I will, um, I'll ask a, a couple of questions and I'm then going to ask you to run through the rewards thing again as well, just to make that clear. But um, first of all, in terms of Melanie asks, in terms of the 
adults only part of you know what whichever the rewards uh sorry the resorts are adults only what age is your adult class as yes uh, so the uh, average age uh, for adults only is 65 years and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm joking <laughs> it's 18 plus so just it 18 is 18 plus, plus. no I, yes. that, it's just worth verifying and clarifying but no that's good okay Jacqueline Davis asks as well, in terms of the properties where you've got golf courses uh, around, um, is it easy to hire and do you have plenty of clubs to hire? Uh, yes, you have all the equipment to hire uh, and the golf cars, uh, trainers and everything. So it's, it's really easy. You don't have to bring your own uh, equipment. Fantastic. Okay. Um, let me just check if there's any more as well. Okay. Yes. Um, I've got uh, Vash Patel asks, um, do they do South Asian weddings in any of the properties? Is that possible? South Asian weddings? Yes. Perhaps we should ask what the difference is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, let well, me. Um, uh, let me okay um let me just i can't see. imagine i can't imagine i can't imagine okay. so basically uh, indian weddings uh, do you uh, are you able to do indian weddings that's what's being okay asked. i have to ask my colleagues from the wedding department yes but we'll make uh, sure we that the, the, it gets weddings. forwarded to you that way someone from the weddings department Perfect. can come back to you or directly to vash as well yes no problem. okay now and, i'm just going to ask uh, you one last thing about the rewards, because I've got two or three people who've already come and asked about it. Um, yes. So I think it's worth running through again. In terms of the 5,000 bonus points that anyone who is watching and watches the webinar is able to claim, what's the simplest way of them doing that? Tell me, run me through that again. Yes, it's it's very simple, very easy. Just go and visit our website, bayaprincipe.com, and then you find the Pro Agent area. It's just a link. You click it, then you get there, and you can uh, register as a new agent. And as I said, if you are already a member, uh, you will also join these 5,000 extra reward points just by sending me a short email. Just contact me, and uh, I will pass these points over to your account as agent. Okay, so if, if, if you're a new agent, go on to bahiaprincipe.com, register as a new agent, and then email Oliver saying, I've registered, can I have some points, please? And he'll say, yes, he's delighted to do so, and, and uh, <laughs> he'll make sure it happens for you. Is that right? Yes, uh, for new members, uh, the moment you get uh, you got the register the registration, you get these five thousand points automatically. For the the already members, this is just to contact me, and then I I inform our department, and then these five thousand points goes over to them. Okay, so if it, if you're registering, it's by here um, yes. If you want to email Oliver, what's the email address, Oliver? Uh, yeah, it's uh, M. Okay, <laughs> maybe I don't know uh, if the, the agents may see uh, after it uh, on the website, or I can just send uh, show you again. If you can put it in, if you're able to put your, are you able to add your um, email address in the chat? Put it in the yes. chat. Okay, Is that okay possible? perfect. Yeah, I will then do, do it that, right and then I can move on. And before I, um, but that, but that's fantastic. Um, so very kind. That's Oliver's. Uh, he's giving away those wonderful reward points. So um, do that. Thank you very much for doing that, Oliver. I'm going to move on to my next presentation. Yes, so of course. if you can mute your sound and your screen and then put your email address in, you'll have 60 or so new friends straight away. Um, and I will, <laughs> I will leave, see you at the end. Right. OK. Um, Next for today's presentations, our third presentation um, is going to be a wonderful update on all luxury things in Malta. Please welcome back Peter Green. Peter. Hi, how are we? We, we are. Um, I, I'm a bit chilly, if I'm honest, Peter. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bit chilly. I'm um, hence this is probably the, the, the first time you've seen me on a webinar with a jumper on. 
That that is true. I was thinking that earlier on. It's the first time I've seen you do like that. So yeah, I, I don't worry. I was in Edinburgh over the weekend and it was it was cold. It was cold. And my parents woke up to um to snow this morning in Aberdeen. So yeah, the dogs have been out in the back playing, which is uh yeah, it's rather nice and right lovely little sprinkling. thing. We're used to it. It's nice if it's dry. I don't mind <laughs> cold as long as it's not as long as it's not pouring with rain. So um but anyway, far, far, let's banish thoughts of wet and windy and cold. <laughs> Take us somewhere warm I'll try. and I will leave you to it. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. It's hard to follow up after the, uh, <laughs> the, you at the end in the Middle East. Thanks, Ivan. Okay. okay, well, obviously, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for, for joining us. And thank you to Simon and Travel Bulletin for hosting us. Um. I always struggle with luxury uh, just purely on the basis of like, I have this concept and idea that, you know, any holiday is a luxury to the person that's going on it. Um, but certainly for the kind of um, premise of this videos and this webinars, I will be talking about some of the finer things in life. Um, and I see a lot of familiar faces. I also see some new names in there as well. So I'm going to cover on some stuff that you probably heard me talk about before, but I'm going to add in some new things as well, just to kind of cover it off. And, I mean, obviously, the the level of experiences that you can have in Malta are absolutely incredible um, from everything ranging from the fine dining to the fine hotels to, you know, the experiences, the events that are coming up. Uh, there is an absolute plethora. And I'll try not to go over because I know Simon will come in with his proverbial hook as well. Um, but I'm going to start on some of like the different hotel options in the different areas and how you're best to stay in and around Malta. So your options in Valletta, you know, these five-star boutique kind of um, palazzos, the townhouses. We'll talk a little bit about the five stars in Slima St. Julian's, maybe uh, Mdina with the what's in there, you know, you've got your boutique palazzo again, and also your Michelin star restaurant in Mdina. And then over in Gozo, we've got some of the, the sort of higher end farmhouses, as well as the Kempinski and the five-star properties over there. So no matter where you are staying on the islands, you can have those luxury experiences um, and even twin center that up and, you know, have a luxury experience in Malta and then a luxury experience in Gozo. But certainly probably the most um, well-known luxury property is the Phoenicia Hotel. You can see this here, um, you know, an Art Deco style hotel built in the night wall, turned into a hotel um, back in the 1920s. It's where the queen used to go ballroom dancing. And you can see from the pictures here, it is absolutely phenomenal and outstanding. Uh, you've got something like the Malta Marriott. Again, you know, I know a lot of people have either stayed here um, on the fam trips. Uh, even that picture in the top right is my own picture from the sea view room. So again, and the great thing about the Malta Marriott, and this is the one to remember, is that, you know, Marriott's obviously a chain. So a lot of the Marriott's, they have to have this sort of continuity in terms of its design and how it looks. Whereas the Malta Marriott is the first one in Europe that actually breaks that. They start putting things like Maltese tiles on the wall and even like the style and the deck or the food is different to what you will find in other Marriott's around. So always worthwhile thinking about that and a beautiful, beautiful view out over Baluta Bay. You've also got the Hyatt Regency um, situated, in, situated in St. Julian's, again, part of the Hyatt chain. Um, the food here is second to none. And actually there's a local guy who apparently he's like a millionaire he's quite rich but there's a local guy here who instead of cooking his breakfast will go and have breakfast in the Hyatt every single morning and he's so well known amongst the staff that's the level that the food is there um so obviously if you can afford it that's not too bad um but yeah great great options for those customers for up that area um the Iniala Harbour House uh you probably heard me talk about this before it's a beautiful beautiful property um situated just on the water's edge of Valletta overlooking the harbour and it is utterly phenomenal you know the the, the offering here and the, the level of service that you get here is absolutely second to none the, the starting room rate is about 230 euros a night which i don't think personally is too bad for what you're getting within that and they're going to have some new um villa kind of style options coming through to you in the next sort of 12 months so a great great phenomenal option there uh, and the Doma Samatello, this is another of that boutique palazzo style. So again, these are these ones that used to be someone's house that has now been converted into a hotel option. And, you know, I've only picked out a couple in there, but there is an abundance of them found all the way around um, the islands. And, you know, in terms of some of the new hotels that we've got coming through, uh, our new Barcello just opened like last week. God, what day are we on now? Thursday. So, yeah, Monday last week. Um, the Barcello opened, uh, the Melia is still coming through. Um, 
again, I'm always hesitant to kind of talk about this, but apparently the the uh, the planning permission has been now given for the hard rock. I mean, I first heard about this back in 2018, but yeah, I mean, apparently it's a lot further along than than it has been before. So keep your eyes and ears peeled for uh, for potentially the hard rock coming through. Um, there's now talks of a six senses coming through actually over on Camino, and they're going to make this into a kind of like nature reserve to keep within the island. You know, obviously we don't want to you know damage the ecosystem over there. So all these things kind of coming through. Um, the Dolman Hotel, that's a family favorite, which was a four star. It's now going to become a five star, and it's going to become a Hilton Double Tree. So again, a lot of luxury options in and around there, and even within the villa properties. Um, you know, you look at the top left and you might not think that's a luxury, but I think having your own space away while you're on holiday is a luxury in itself. And you can see from some of these villa options, you know, they are phenomenal. Obviously, we are very sad that James Villa is now gone, but somewhere like Solmar is going to pick that up. And we are working in the background to try and get you some more villa providers as well. So keep your eyes and ears peeled. As I say, there's always announcements coming through, but there's always going to be more hotel options coming through for you guys. That's one of the things that we are kind of focusing on in that one. Um, and then within that, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people tend to go to kind of like Valletta and things like that. You know, you can go to the three cities. It's a great option on the other side of the harbor. And then within here, you've still got those boutique palazzo styles, um, something like the Kugel Gran Machina, which is, a, you know, it's a hotel situated in a 500 year old fortress. Uh, room 221 is haunted if you're into that kind of thing. I know my missus is. So, um, you know, so again, a different level of experience that could be had here. And, you know, with the history of Malta and with the history of the three cities, it's almost like that regal option, um, you know, with the Knights of St. John that you can go in here and dine with here, stay here. So those are the real high end luxury options. But then coming into the food and again, most of you will have heard me talk about food a lot for the past couple of years. We're talking about the Michelin star restaurants. Um, just to let you know, the Michelin Guide gets released every April. Uh, so we are expecting a new Michelin Guide coming out in the next kind of couple of months. Uh, we're also expecting that there will be additions to the Michelin Guide. So we're thinking that there's probably going to be at least another two Michelin star restaurants, hopefully. And it's going to get expanded potentially up to 50 recognized restaurants, uh, which is going to be phenomenal for the islands, especially the size of the islands there. But you can see that the food is absolutely incredible. It goes hand in hand with our wine tourism. Uh, we have two indigenous grapes of wine that don't exist anywhere else in the world. So, you know, you get that real luxurious experience when it comes to gastronomy. You can come out and sam sample some of the finest Maltese food with the finest Maltese wine. Um, and it's really something that you can only get in Malta. You cannot get anywhere else in the world. You know, Italian wine is very Italian. Uh, French wine is very French. And, you know, Maltese wine you will never see it out and about in the streets. You'll never see it out in any of the shops. It's only something that you can really have within Malta. So at the moment, and you might need to know this, we do have six Michelin star restaurants, um, 35 Michelin recognized restaurants. But as I said, we are hoping that this is going to go up quite significantly moving into the new year. Um, and it's something that I'm a massive fan of. I, I believe that, you know, the food in Malta is absolutely second to none. Um, and I will always, always stand up for something like that. But then even once you've eaten and you want to go out and about and explore, we then come into some of the events that you can do. So things like our pageant of the seas where, you know, we have the you can see the aerobics and the kind of over the waterfront in Valletta. Or maybe you want to go and see a play um, in Manuel Theatre, which is the oldest working Commonwealth, uh, oldest working theatre in the Commonwealth. They opened in the mid 1600s and it's been open since. So. The reason I put in some of these events um, is actually, I don't know how many of you might remember this, but back in the early 2010s, um, Visit Scotland had uh, a thing where each year was like a different themed year. So they had a year of food and a year of wilderness and a year of history. And I think they did that about, for about five or six years. Well, next year in Malta for 2024, uh, we're actually hosting our first ever Biennale, which um, some of you might have seen in other cities or other locations around the world. Malta is going to host its first ever one. This is going to be from March into May next year. But there's also going to be other events all the way throughout the year. Something like um, Andre Rio is going to be coming back over. We have our own um, tenor called Joseph Kalea. Uh, he's actually performing on Saturday with Andrea Bocelli, but he's going to be doing um, quite a few events. And we're not just going to focus. Well, I mean, the big focus is going to be March to May, but we're also going to have events all the way throughout the year. Um, that, you know, we're going to really be celebrating kind of the cultural aspect of things 
So you're going to have access to different parts of, you know, maybe some of the museums or some of the fortifications that are usually not open to the public. We're going to have um, bigger focus on our kind of festas, which are actually going to be put onto the UNESCO list of intangible culture. Um, so you've got all these different kind of aspects that are going to be coming through together. And this is going to be a huge, huge year for us. So if you are looking at sort of like your higher end clients who like the finer things in life, certainly for the 2024, if they want to do the plays and the Baroque kind of style festivals and the, the operas and those, those kind of things that you would expect of, a, I would class as a high culture kind of society, then this is going to be the year for Malta coming through. Um, so thank you very much for kind of like listening on that one. Um, just a couple of things from me. So do check out the Facebook page. I always try and like keep you up to date with things in there. Do check out the training portal because we have completely revamped it for those that don't know about it, multi-training. Um, we've just launched, well, tomorrow we're going to launch an adventure and activity course, but then at the end of next month, I'm going to launch a luxury course. This kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, and I'm also developing right now a social media wall. So basically anytime um, a publication like Travel Bulletin uh, or a tour operator posts something about Malta and they tag Visit Malta UK in it, it will share onto our social media wall, which in this portal, you will be able to share directly onto your own feeds as well. So we're trying to make it a one-stop shop for you guys. Um, I never thought I would do coding, but apparently I'm in the background of Facebook somewhere. So it's ridiculous. Um, but thank you very much for listening to me and thanks for the whistle stop tour of Malta. Fantastic. Great stuff. As always. Um, yeah, we've gone round, we've gone round everywhere. Um, that's good <laughs> to see. I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, and as you say, people you know already on there, people you um haven't seen for a while. I noticed um Becky's Becky Walker's on there, and I will so hopefully see you, Becky, uh, up in the new year, up in Hull or Leeds or wherever you might be joining us as well. Um, I have a question straight away from Jacqueline Brady, who asks, do you have, you may have mentioned them, I may have missed it, do you have the dates for Pride 24? Oh, God, that's a good question. Um, I, I just <laughs> love, I love, I love the fact as well that you mentioned Becky Walker, because she literally just messaged me as well. I can just see that flag off of my phone. Um, hi, Becky. Uh, so Pride is usually about the kind of first or second week of September. It's not officially confirmed yet. I mean, obviously, Euro Pride, we had the 7th to the 17th. I think the Pride before that was the fourth to the 12th so it's usually around that kind of window that kind of first second week of september so um but as soon as the dates go out it'll be uploaded onto any sort of news site that we have it'll be in my facebook group it'll be on the training portal it'll be on there so um I, i'll try and get some in inside scoop details but yeah you're usually about that kind of first 10 days of september do you say it'll be on your wall as soon as it happens exactly there you that. go exactly um, that. can you see my love free art coming through <laughs> <laughs> i've got from um from Bryony um Hawken as well. I've got where would you recommend? I know you're a specialist in this as well. So where would you recommend for the best area for snorkeling? Oh god, the best area for snorkeling. Um Gozo. Probably Gozo, I'd imagine. Uh anything kind of like up the north of the island, uh kind of in the northwest, so like Maliha Bay, um, over to like kind of Ain Sophia, Golden Bay, and over to Gozo. You've got to remember that. You know, the southern part of uh, Malta, we still have like a working shipyard. So it is quite an active channel for certainly a lot of the trawler ships or the delivery ships, cargo ships and things. So that does kick up quite a lot of silt. So if you go over to kind of the north of the island, um, so as I say, you've got kind of the dive sites up there. Over on Camino, you've got the P29, P31 tugboat sort of sank down there as well. Um, things like the Crystal Lagoon, the Blue Lagoon you can do. And then over, um, you know, kind of on Gozo, again, you've got the bays that you can just walk straight into, um, into the water from there. So, yeah, I, I personally think Gozo, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, yeah. That's great. No, I appreciate that. And thank you very much for doing that. Um, we are, um, the time flies, I tell you, especially when we're all having fun. Um, <laughs> so I, I am going to have to ask you to share your competition details. First of all, what your prize is. Um, and then what the question is. First bit I can do. Second bit, maybe not so much, but we'll wait and see. Um, so the, the prize is a Malta goodie bag. You know, we love a goodie bag here. Um, so we've got some Maltese preserves. We got some, I've got some new sea salt in, got some new olive oil in. I've got some new candles in. Obviously a bottle of that famous Maltese wine. Um, so yeah, I just try and chuck all the goodies in together. And I 
pretty sure my I've question, got the question. I've got the sorry, question. I, I, if you... I, let me let me let me test myself. Um, how many Michelin star restaurants do we currently have in Malta? Not what we're projected, but what we currently have in Malta. In the archipelago, I was told. In the in the archipelago, there you go. Close enough, close enough. So how many Michelin star restaurants in the archipelago? And remember, everyone, don't start putting it on the chat or on on because uh, you'll only be telling other people. Um, but go to travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition. Enter it there, um, and then you'll be in the chance of that wine that you can resell on eBay very, very successfully. Apparently, not that wow. you would do that. Wow, Simon, it's the last time I'm ever giving you a bottle of Maltese wine, mate. <laughs> No, so please join us, enter that. Um, thank you very much, Peter. I would ask you, if you don't mind, to mute and turn off your camera while we have our final presentation of the afternoon. Okay, um, let's get going with our final presentation of this afternoon. Um, and it's going to be delivered by Delfina Hotels and Resorts. Hello again to Leila. Are you, are you well and, and um, have you been entranced by other people's presentations? Yes. <laughs> hello, hello again. Um, Fantastic. Okay, I will leave you to it, Leila, and I will see you in 10 minutes. Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. So today, we, I would like to take a walk with you to the north of Sardinia and tell you more about Delfina. So this Sardinian family business. So maybe some of you have already been to Sardinia. We are right here in the middle of the Mediterranean. The island is very well connected with all Euro Europe during summer. The island is also well known for the sun, the beaches and the amazing crystal clear water. This is, for example, a view uh, over the archipelago of La Maddalena, which is a true paradise. So Delfina was born right here in Gallura. We are local, we know this land in depth, and we are the specialists of Gallura. As you can see from this map, our hotels are all located along the coast of northern Sardinia. We have five stars, four stars superior, four stars residences and villas starting from Costa Smeralda in the Northeast to Badesi in the Northwest. Eight different properties and each one with its own character and all are a maximum of an hour and a half from Alguero and all the airports. So in addition to being beautiful, this land has been hospitable for millennia. And for this reason, since the birth of Delfina, it has come naturally to us to set our corporate mission. So we want to offer an authentic Mediterranean hospitality in, in unique places. Delfina has been elected again, the best Italian hotel group at the 2023 World Travel Awards, and also proudly world's leading green independent hotel group in 2022. And we are also candidates this year. So who better than the FINA, which is a family business created, guided and supported by a Sardinian family can transmit this value. Here you see our brand manager, Elena Montoni, from the left, our president, Francesco, our general manager, Libero, and our CEO, Marco Montoni. And now let's discover the properties. This is Resort Valle dell'Erica Talasso and Spa. It's located near Santa Teresa Gallura and it belongs to our five star collection. It's nestled in a stunning park of 28 hectares with over 1.5 kilometers of coastline overlooking the island uh, of La Maddalena, Corsica, and Bonifacio. You can even spot the French mountains in the background from these pictures. Uh, the resort consists of two hotels, Hotel Erika and Hotel La Licciola, and this hotel is suitable for both families and couples. Immersed in the Mediterranean Maquis and among granite rocks lies our first class Talasso and Spa Wellness Center, Le Terme. These are the outdoor seawater Talasso pools, heated at different temperature for Talasso circuit. 
And this is our main beach. It's called La Lichola. Most of the rooms have sea view, some also private pools overlooking the main beach. The hotel is also equipped with a baby, mini, and junior club, which is called Erika Land, the kids' paradise. In this picture, kids are camping and living in there after a long adventurous day. Uh, this is part of the wide range of activities offered by Erika Land, and their activities change weekly, and most of them are outdoor. Here's again the main beach, La Lichola, with all the services such as beach bars, sunbeds, and umbrellas. No need to book in advance, as here is uh, one a first come, first serve basis. And guests can also enjoy various private cars inside the resort. This is Caracoli Bay, conveniently located near a beach bar where guests can also enjoy some fresh summer food. And in one of these cafes is located restaurant Lizzini, where clients can eat bare food on the sand for romantic dinner or special occasion. And now let's jump to Palau. This is our other five star. It's called Hotel Capodorso Talasso and Spa. It's near Palau and it's very romantic, perfect for couples looking for relaxation, privacy, and tranquility. It's a boutique hotel, 86 rooms in the middle of this large park hidden in greenery. And you can see the golf course, a private marina, and two sandy beaches. One of them is equipped with sun beds and umbrellas. It's nestled in lush greenery, and the hotel adds beautiful corners of relaxation. This is, for example, Cala Selvaggia, one of the two beaches, reachable with a promenade from the hotel. There is a golf course pitch and pad, nine holes, with driving range, and it's ideal for beginners. This is the Il Flottant. They can also be enjoyed for a fresh and tasty lunch. And this is the main restaurant. It's called Gli Olivastri, and you can dine among olive trees. So this is another view of the main pool on the cliffs where guests can sunbath or sip a drink under the shadow of a juniper tree. And now let's, uh, let's jump to the West Coast, precisely to Isola Rossa. It's a small fishing village where is located the Hotel Marineda Talasso and Spa. It's also a five-star property. The hotel overlooks the bay of the same name and this hotel is suitable for both couples and families. This is the main beach, La Marinetta, where guests can find facilities such as umbrella with sun loungers, dressing rooms and showers, as well as the snack bar, where clients can also have lunch here. There are three restaurants with buffet or table service and also the beautiful terrace of Il Tramonto, which, is, which means sunset. And this is another beautiful view from the hotel. So wellness is the focus of the Marineda. Here we have the largest talassotherapy center among the Delfin hotels, 2,500 square meters dedicated to wellness and 15 cabins for talassotherapy and beauty treatments. And one of these is same cover, as you can see from the picture. So we remind you that we have a transfer service to the hotels bookable via our website. Helicopter transfers are, um, are also available on uh, request. We also have our own fleet of boats, which includes some luxury charter boats for wonderful excursions to the island of the archipelago. And also a vintage sailing ship, a wooden Norwegian boat built in 1927. The itinerary includes navigation among the main islands of the La Madalena archipelago. So now a quick hint of our values, starting from our commitment to the environment. We only use 100% green energy in all the properties. And on our website, you can find in full our We Are Green protocol. When we talk about sustainability, we are talking about a path that we started even before Delfina was born, when there was not yet so much talk about sustainability. Our commitment is reflected, for example, in our printed matter, we print on certified paper and with vegetable inks, um, everything is organic as are the spa products and cleaning detergents are Ecolabel certified. So we are closely connected with the territory uh, and our traditions. 
Therefore, we have chosen to use local craftsmanships in our furnishings, such as traditional handcrafted rugs and handwork twisted iron for the headboards. And good food has always been an important issue for us. For 30 years, we have been exploring the culinary excellence of Sardinia to offer local food in our restaurants. And this is why we have created the brand Genuine Local Food Oriented. So the aim of this brand is to use as much as we can zero kilometer products. And this continued research has led to the creation of Delfina Selection, um, thanks to partnerships with local producers. So this project brings together the best local food and wine products carefully selected by the Montoni family. And these are offered exclusively in the various Delphine hotels. And our guests can buy them on site or online to take the taste of their vac vacation home with them. Some of you may also know that Sardinia is one of the blue zones, one of the five areas in the world where people live longer thanks to the quality of life, eating habits and daily lifestyle. And among the nine habits that have been identified in common between these five blue zones, there are several that can be lived and experienced daily during the Delfina holiday. For example, being outdoors, following the Mediterranean diet, consuming olive oil and drinking a good glass of red wine. For example, our canon now is the richest in polyphenols and therefore antioxidant, knowing how to relax away from any kind of stress and in contact with nature. Um, And please remember, we take care of our guests from the moment they arrive at the airport where we have a welcome desk until their departure. And we have also a new on-name catalog where you can find all the offers and new packages for these kind of special occasions. All the FINA properties can be booked on our website and in the agency section, you can enter with your password and check availability and prices online and book in real time. So here comes the end of our presentation. I appreciate everyone for being here. Thank you so much. And you can find our email for any further questions. Thank you, Leila. Um, Leila's been very, very, um very careful not to mention she's part of the family so um that we, we should, that's fantastic that you are all a family owned business i think that's amazing and you have the properties and you welcome people from right at the airport which is which is amazing so uh, thank you for that leila i have a few questions for you yeah. um i've got uh holly i think it's holly armstrong who asks in terms of the baby clubs um what age do you what what age are they available from? Okay, so it depends on the hotel. Uh, of course, Capodors is a boutique hotel, so it's for couples and not for families. But um, if we're talking about Resort Valle de Lerica, uh, it's from two to three with qualified staff at extra charge, and from three to up to let's say fifteen or whatever. While Marineda, it's from four, let's say to thirteen. Yeah. That's helpful. It's just it just gives people an idea because obviously people's children are different ages as they look to go. And it's uh, OK. I've also got um, Jenny who asks now this was right on the money because this is something that's very, very topical, as you mentioned, in terms of um, Blue Zone. So the, 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 the it's it's in our, our newspapers at the moment. I was reading something about it actually on the on the BBC website this morning. So. This is interesting. In terms of what your chefs do in the hotels, do they follow that sort of um, uh, the, those sort of products in terms of what they're what they're going to produce for the meals, or is it just happen to be that that's the Mediterranean food and 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 what they look for? Yeah, of course they do. Uh, they use zero kilometer products uh, and we are really careful on using like products from here. And uh, as I said, uh, we really care about uh, food and that's why we created the Delfina selection. So uh, let's say our wine, olive oils and everything are really fresh and from here from Sardinia. So this is really important. It's all local, effectively. Everything yeah, is everything has is, a yeah. has no has a zero mileage, should we say? So, which is uh, rather than zero kilometer for you. But anyway, um, thank you very much for that, Leila. Uh, everything else, as I say, 
in terms of any other questions and, and things that people want to know, they will be forwarded on to you as well. Um, it's time, if you can do once again, uh, to give us some details of your wonderful competition prize, which is very generous, and also the question that you um, uh, we're going to pose about it as well. So the prize is a three-night complimentary stay, uh, one of the hotel I presented before. And the question is, uh, which one of the Delfina Five Star Collection is the Romantic Boutique Hotel? Okay, that's fantastic. So we've got a three-night stay for, I think it's for two people um, at one of the Delfina Hotels and Resorts that, you, that you've... Uh, uh, run through today and the question is to just to run through that once more which one of the Delfina five-star collection is the romantic boutique hotel again just to reiterate um, you have to go to our website to enter so it's travelbulletin.co.uk forward slash webinar competition um, so if you're watching this live or on demand make sure you enter the competition before Sunday the 3rd of December at 4 p.m. And you too could be living the like of life of luxury like Layla in a five-star amazing hotel in <laughs> Sardinia. Um, so that's awesome. Thank you ever so much. Um, we have come to the end of our uh, wonderful webcast this afternoon. As always, if you need a recap on any of the training, you will be able to watch it again. Um, it'll be up as of tomorrow morning on our website. It'll be on our Facebook page. And for those of you who choose to, you can go and see it on YouTube as well. So thank to all of today's partners for their wonderful updates. Brilliant training. If you can now all come back on screen, um, we're going to get a, a picture of everyone and give everyone. Thank you to everyone for joining today. We really, really, it's a cold day out there um, and it's good to get some warmth on the screen. So thank you to all the agents for joining. Um, thank you to everyone. Give everyone a good, good big wave. Goodbye. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you ever so much, everyone. See you all soon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.